Hello Internet, it's Champ Dog here and welcome. So today we're going to be starting a playthrough of Twilio Quest. So if you haven't heard of Twilio Quest, I'm not surprised. It's a uh, game developed by Twilio, who I know nothing about, that's meant to teach some real-world coding skills through this retro-style 16-bit adventure game. So that's all I know about it, so let's jump in and see what's going on here. Oh, I'll type in your name, this brings back the memories. Oh, look at these cute little avatars. Um, I'm going to choose this one because I've always wanted to have pink hair. Are you on a live Twilio quest event? No. This is raising so many questions. New operator detected. Neural connection to the cloud has been established, and life sign readings are within a normal human range. Welcome aboard the Fog Owl. The Fog Owl, huh? I assume that's this ship looking thing that we appear to be in. I apologize for any discomfort. Slight dizziness is common when forming a direct neural connection to the cloud for the first time. I am sure you have many questions, but first, allow me to describe how you can navigate this virtual environment. Sure, how do I move around? You can move your avatar around the screen using the arrow keys, or the W, A, S and D keys. And if I want to talk to someone or interact with an object, how do I do that? So unfortunately I can't use my number pad for this, which is a little bit annoying. To interact with a person or object aboard the ship or in any other virtual environment, approach the person or object and press the space bar. Okay, I'll stretch my legs a bit then come over to speak with Understood. you. Understood. Please speak with me as soon as you are able. I have important information for you as you begin your training, and I will answer any questions you may have, to the best of my ability. Fun little robot power. Wow, look at this wall. Isn't this quite charming? Uh, look at my little guy moving around. But where's his pink hair? Little exclamation mark. I assume that means I can interact with something. The eggs for a bridge crew of four. When the owl's ready to fly, I should recruit a team for the mission. Okay, that seems to be all he has to say about that. Placement parts for a neural cloud interface never hurts to be prepared. Ooh, training mission. What is any of this? Okay, I'm going to come back to this a bit later. Looks like this pod is configured for a different user. I should use my VR pod instead. It's the open pod with the green light up top, right? Let's see what this desk is. Note some battle tactics with facing the forces of the legacy systems. Someone expects trouble once we get the ship online. Set this part, okay, yep. We've read that message already. Oh, there's a little note down here. What did the zero say to the eight? Nice belt. Sadly, that's the best one in this stand-up routine. I hope whoever wrote this iterates a few more times before going on stage. Okay, I don't get that at all. Bit of background on me, I know nothing about coding or tech, but I just thought this would be a fun little learning adventure. I wonder what kind of fuel this thing runs on. Okay, so let's go talk to our robot pal. Operator, I am pleased to see you once again. How can I be of service? This may sound like a silly question, but why am I here? Temporary short-term memory loss is a possible side effect of connecting to the cloud as you have. The effect will pass, but in the meantime, you can access your journal for more context on where you are, and what you are meant to do. Open the journal by clicking the, book, icon in the top menu bar, or by pressing the, J, key. Beautiful. What should I do next? I recommend that you undertake training missions using the virtual reality pods on the starboard side of the ship. Walk up to one of the pods and press the space bar. Then, use the mission computer to select a training exercise. 
These skills will be of great use to you when the Fog Owl is fully operational, and we can join the struggle against the legacy systems. I have a few more questions about all of this. No doubt you have many questions since arriving in the cloud. I shall endeavor to answer them as best I can. Where am I right now? You are aboard the cloud exploration vessel designated Fog Owl. We are approximately 1.2 million ticks outside the meme cluster, at an undisclosed location deep within the cloud. So I'm literally in the cloud right now? You are literally in the cloud in the... Millennial? Sense of the word? Your physical body is still located in the real world, but you have formed a direct neural connection to the cloud. This enables you to interpret data from the cloud at incredibly high speeds, presented using sensory input and mental models you built to interpret data from the real world. Madness. So the cloud is represented for me using my existing mental models. Is that why the cloud looks like outer space? Just so. The enormity of space, and the ability to traverse it in a ship, are concepts your brain knows how to interpret. Your neural interface uses these metaphors to allow you to more easily explore and understand the virtual worlds of the cloud. Can I ask something else about the cloud? What more can I tell you about the cloud? So is everyone on the internet here in the cloud too? Other internet users are indeed present in the cloud, but the interfaces they use to perceive it are not as advanced as yours. While they live and work in the virtual worlds of the cloud, most internet users view these worlds as if through a keyhole. That's unfortunate. Everyone should understand the cloud like we do. Educating the public about the cloud is important, but consider the following. Do you know how water flows through your faucet, or how an engine moves a train along the tracks? We trust that those who contribute these wonders to our world keep our safety and best interest in mind. Such is our responsibility as we build virtual worlds in the cloud. Can I ask something else about the cloud? What more can I tell you about the cloud? No, I can't, so let's talk about something else. I am prepared to offer additional information as requested. I'd like to get to know you better. Could you tell me about yourself? How's that for a bad pickup line? I am flattered by your interest. As you know, my name is Cedric, and I have been assigned as your personal assistant and executive officer aboard the Fog Owl. Are you a robot? Not precisely. I am a virtual intelligence program, currently executing on multiple servers in data centers distributed across the Earth. However, it is frequently useful to appear in the cloud or the real world in a physical form. The robot you see in front of you is my avatar in this world. I currently use a Misty 2 chassis from Misty Robotics for this purpose. Oh, I can click on this yellow text. Let's see what happens. Okay, it brings up a web page. Maybe some other time. Mind if I ask something else about you? I do you? not mind. Ask, and I shall do my best to answer. So, what do you like to do for fun? Yeah, I'm definitely chatting this robot up. I wish I could say. While my programming is advanced in many respects, I lack a strong understanding of the human experience. I know the meaning of words like fun, but I do not truly understand them. I'm sorry to hear that. Is there anything I can do to help? In an attempt to better understand humanity, I have joined a variety of social media platforms. Recently, I created a YouTube channel where I capture low-quality mobile phone video of my real-world avatar removing new products from their packaging. If you wish to help, you might consider smashing that like button, or perhaps slapping that bell, to subscribe for my future content. Yeah, uh, he's uh, down with the lingo, and look at his little love heart eyes, it appears my attempts to flirt have not gone unnoticed. Can we ask anything else about I him? I do not mind. Ask, we cannot. And I shall do my best to so answer. Let's talk about something else. I am prepared to offer additional information as requested. Can you tell me more about the Twilio Quest program? Oh, yes, please. The Twilio Quest program is a top secret organization dedicated to exploring and safeguarding the wild frontier of the cloud. Operators in the Twilio Quest program, people like you, are at the forefront of this important mission. What can you tell me about the history of the program? In the year 2013, the Twilio Quest program trained a handful of developers, the first operators, to take up the tools of software development in a mission to save the cloud. Today, 
advances in cloud exploration technology allow us to further scale our recruitment efforts. This is most fortunate, as the legacy systems seem to be gaining strength at the same time. Best operators, I'd love to meet them someday. You will get your chance to meet them in due time. But before that can happen, the Forgal must be made ready for exploration, and you must focus on your operator training. I had other questions about Tweedio Quest. Yes, operator. What would you like to know? What are the duties of an operator? Operators are not part of a formal command structure, and have no responsibilities as such. However, to be considered an operator and receive the support of the Twilio Quest program, members must adhere to the operator's code. What is the operator's operators code? Operators are sworn to use their abilities only to write code that promotes hope, power, and freedom. For all of humanity, those that write code used to steal, oppress, or deceive, cannot be called operators. Intentionally or not, Developers who use their skills in this way have become part of the legacy systems. Right. I had other questions about Twilio. Yes, Quest. operator. What would you like to know? What do we know about the legacy systems? Unfortunately, we know very little about the specific plans and membership of the legacy systems. We do know they are a vast network of powerful individuals, always seeking to protect their hoarded wealth and influence. Until recently, they had been content to operate from the shadows. Now, their operations grow bolder and more brazen every day. They're becoming bolder, how so? It seems not a day goes by without a new security breach, social media misinformation campaign, or abuse of privileged data access. These acts may seem random, but our intelligence indicates they are connected. We believe this is only the beginning of a larger offensive by the legacy systems. And what do we intend to do about this? We will respond by swelling the ranks of the operators. The more people we have exploring the cloud, adhering to the operator's code, the better our chances of stamping out the influence of the legacy systems. Even in the vastness of the cloud, we will ensure there is no dark corner where the legacy systems can hide. Okay, that was all the questions about Twilio Quest, I believe. Yes, Let's operator. Check. What would you like to know? Talk about something else. I am prepared to offer additional information as requested. Okay, I think that's everything. So we'll head over here. So we're at about 13 minutes. I'll wrap this up here, and in our next video, we'll start one of these training quests. Thanks for watching.